sometimes I build complex functions with multiple levels of nesting. To make it easy to understand the concept I followed, I like to add some descriptive notes in the context of the function for future reference. That reminds me of what I did. I'm not talking about adding comments to the cell, but rather regular text description within the function itself. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to type any text inside a function that does not change the result of the function. I also give you three amazing bonus tips on how to do the same thing in Power Query, in Power BI, or in VBA. So stay tuned until the end. Now let's see how I do that in Excel. In this example, I have in columns B, C, D, E, a list that shows a date, a region, a wrap, and sales. And I want to select a sales wrap name from a drop list in cell H3 and accordingly have all the records corresponding to this manager extracted in the range starting from G5. Prior to dynamic array functions, I had to create a complex function consisting of seven levels of nesting. And let me show you the function that lives in cell G6. I hit Ctrl Shift U to expand the formula bar. And here is the function I created using if, index, aggregate, row, and rows. It's a complicated function. So to make it easy for me to understand what I did, I added a little comment within the context of the function that reads, the aggregate function returned the row number where the condition is met to the index function. You can watch this tutorial and learn how I created this solution using the index and aggregate function by clicking on the link below this video. And now let's understand the concept of adding notes within the context of a function. In the next worksheet concept, I have different values in column B. I have a number, a date, logical values, and text. And I'm going to create in column C a special function that returns a value converted to a number. It's a single character function. It's the n function. So if I type equal n, I hit tab and I select B2. The n function converts any value to a number. So if it's already a number, then it will return a number. What if I copy this function to the date? Then it returns the serial number of the date. Logical values true and false can be represented by 1 and 0. So if I put them in an n function, then I get 1 for true and 0 for false. I'm especially interested in text because I'll be adding text notes. And the n function will convert any text to a 0. You can read in column D the function I created. If you add a zero to a number, that doesn't change the number. So I'm going to use the end function in two different ways. I will be using it as an extra argument, separated by comma from other arguments, or I can add it to a number. Let's see the two situations. I go to the next example. In this example, I have a list of student names and the score for each student in three different subjects. By goal, is to extract in one single cell the name or names of the student who got the highest score, and I want the names separated by commas. I created this solution by using dynamic array functions. Let's expand the formula bar, Control shift u to expand. And as you can see, I used array to text by row, lambda, sum, filter, and max functions. I created this function in cell G1, you can learn how I created this solution by watching my tutorial. The link is in the description below this video. What I want to do now is to add a little comment within the function that doesn't affect the functionality of the function. Then I'm going to click after the sum function before the comma and I type plus n and then open bracket. In double quotation, I type returns the total score for each student. I close the double quotation, I close the bracket, and I have a comment within my function. 
when I hit enter, that doesn't affect the functionality of the function and I still get the same result. Let's collapse the formula bar, control shift U, and I want to test if the function is dynamic. So I'm going to select one of the students, let it be key, and I'm going to change the science score for key in a way that the total score for key matches the total score for Page and Salazar. So if I make it 27, the moment I hit enter, look at cell G1, then the function is dynamic, although I have a comment inside the function. I can also add the comment as an extra argument to a function. Let's see an example. In this example, I have a list which shows a title and author pages released, whether read or not, and the cost. I would like for each title to extract the cost. And to get the cost, I have to use a VLOOKUP function. The problem is, I don't have the cost in one single list. I have it in two different lists. So it might be in list number one or in list number two. And in order to use a VLOOKUP function, for the table array argument, I have to append the two lists, the one in columns HI and the other one in columns KL. And I built my solution in which I combined classic function with dynamic array functions. So you can see that I used a VLOOKUP function with a VSTACK function. I want to add a little comment to the VSTACK function. Let's expand the formula bar, Control shift u and before the closing bracket of the VSTAC function, I'm going to add an extra argument. I type a comma, and then I type the end function, n, and I open bracket. In double quotes, I type provides the table array for the VLOOKUP function. I close the double quotation, and I close the bracket for the end function. Now if I hit enter, my function is working just fine. I collapse the formula bar control shift u and I can copy this function all the way down. If you don't want to have the comment in the entire column, then you can just keep it in the first cell and delete it from the subsequent cells before copying to the entire column. So I can copy down, select the second cell, delete my end function, and then I hit control enter. Now I can copy this function all the way down. I want to copy without formatting. And now I have my notes in the top cell only. In this example, I created a month calendar for any date I have in cell E3. I have three drop lists for selecting the day, the month, and the year. And if I select any combination, then the date in cell E3 updates and the month calendar corresponding to that date is created automatically. I used Power Query to create this useful functionality. You can learn how I built this project by watching my tutorial. Link is in the description below this video. Now I want to switch to Power Query and add some notes. There are three ways of adding notes to Power Query. To switch to the Query Editor, I click on Queries and Connections, and then I double-click on the query. It opens the query editor and I would like to add a comment to one of the steps. I can add the comments directly to the applied steps or I can add it to the M code in the advanced editor. So let's learn how to add the comment to the applied steps. So if I select the step inserted day name, you can see in the day name column the full name of the weekday. The next step extracts the first three characters of the day name, and I have the abbreviated name in preparation for building my calendar. I would like to add a little comment to this step. So how do I do that? I right-click on the step, and from the right-click menu, I select Properties. The Step Properties dialog box opens, where I'll be writing my comment, which will read, we just want the abbreviated name of the weekday. When I hit OK, a comment has been added. If you look at the step, there is a little information icon that pops up next to the gear icon. And if you hover over the step, you will read in the tooltip the wording of the comment. What happened to the M code when I created this comment? Let's have a look. 
So if I go to the Home tab or the View tab and I click on Advanced Editor, the Advanced Editor dialog box opens and here is the comment preceded by two forward slashes. You can type any comment just by typing two forward slashes and it appears in green color. So I'm going to type another comment. It's not a step. Then I don't need to type a comma. And I type two forward slashes. And then I type the text for my comment. Please pause the video and subscribe to my channel. When I hit done, then the query worked just fine and the functionality is not affected. You can also add multiple lines of comment in the advanced editor. So if I open the advanced editor one more time, you can either comment some of the steps or you can add a comment of multiple lines. And if you want to comment one or multiple steps, then before the step, you type a forward slash and a star. And at the end of the steps that you want to comment, you type a star and a forward slash. Then whatever is included between the forward slashes will be a comment. It's not an executable line of the M code. Of course, this requires making some modifications to the code because each step refers to the previous step. Then when I go to the next one, I will need to refer the previous active step. I'm not going to do that. And I'm deleting the stars and the forward slashes. This becomes an executable line of the code. Adding comments in VBA is extremely useful, whether it is simply a description or you created some step that you don't want to execute, but you don't want to delete them from your code. In this example, I created a simple code that highlights the column and row of any selected cell. I have a list in columns A, B, C, D, E, and if I select any cell inside this list, the corresponding columns and rows are highlighted. If I click and select a different cell, the corresponding column and row are highlighted. But if I click outside, nothing is highlighted. You can learn how I created this solution, either by using conditional formatting or by using a simple code in VBA by watching the tutorial. The link is in the description below this video. Now I would like to switch to the code in VBA and add a little comment. To switch to the Visual Basic Editor, I hit Alt F11. Here is my code, and whenever you see this green text, like in Power Query, you can tell that this is a comment. To write a comment, it's very simple. So I can write any comment so long as it is preceded by a single quotation. For example, if I hit Enter, and I type a single quotation, I can type any text I want. And then when I move to the next line, it turns into green, denoting that it's a comment. You can also comment and uncomment steps very easily in the Visual Basic Editor by adding the Edit Toolbar. I have the Edit Toolbar available here. If you want to edit, you go to the View menu, hover over Toolbars, and check edit toolbar. I already have it and I'm not going to add anything. I have two lines of code that are commented, which means they are not executed. And I have the same two lines above. The color index in the top one is six, which means yellow, and the color index in the second one is green. Then I want to change the color of the highlight for the columns and rows from yellow to green. I'm going to select the top two lines and comment the block. They become non-executable lines. And then I select the next two lines. And I want to execute these two steps, so I uncomment the block. By doing so, the color of the highlight will change from yellow to green. Let's have a look. I close my Visual Basic Editor, and when I click somewhere, the column and row of the selected cell turn into green. You can add comments to your visualization in Power BI. 
I have a simple report in Power BI showing the population by continent. And I want to publish this report to Power BI services in the cloud. And because I'm signed in to my account, I can simply click on publish to the right side of the home tab. It asks me about the destination. Where do you want to publish? I'm going to publish it to my workspace. And then I hit select. It will take a minute to publish and then it will notify me that it has been successfully published so I can switch to Power BI services. Now I can open comments to visualization.pbix and here is my report in the clouds. I want to add a little comment to the tree map chart. Then I hover over the tree map. I click on the ellipses and here it says add a comment. When I click on add a comment, it opens a pane on the right side. I can write the wording of my comment, like, Africa has the second highest population. If I wish, I can add a mention to one of my colleagues. I'm not going to do that. I hit post and I'm done. Here is the wording of the comment. Let's close this pane. I can tell that I have a comment in the visualization because I see a special icon. If I click on show visual conversations, then it opens the same pane all other visualizations on my report are faded, just focusing on the one where I have my comment. I showed you in this tutorial how to add notes to your functions in Excel, or to your steps in the M code of Power Query, or to your code in VBA, or to your visualization in a Power BI report. And if you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.